this is Steve at stevephoto.com and I am here today with another video uh, lesson. Um, I'm going to basically show you guys how I convert an image to black and white using Silver Effects Pro. So what I'm going to show you today is I'm going to open a Leica X1 file and I'm going to show you how I use Silver Effects Pro to uh, convert. So I opened up the raw DNG file with Adobe Camera Raw 5.6. I already have made my adjustments here, so I'm going to open the image. And there it is. And for the sake of speed, I am going to resize this image right now to 1200 pixels wide before I open up Silver Effects Pro. But we're going to open up Silver Effects Pro by going to Filter, Nick Software, Silver Effects Pro. Now this is a plugin that's available for Photoshop or Aperture. So I'm going to open up Silver Effects Pro and here is my screen. This is the Silver Effects Pro plugin screen. On your left you will see your different options. It gives you some presets and it, it always defaults to neutral which is what you see here. You can also hit underexpose. If you have an overexposed shot you hit underexpose and it would look better. Overexpose same concept. High structure gives you kind of a uh, more of a rougher look I would say as you can see high structure there you go. Pull process, push process um, you have all kinds of presets. The color filters, there's a red filter none of these really look that great. Um, then there's some tintype, infrared, infrared soft sepia so you have all kinds even a holga and pinhole filter if you want that holga look there you go right there just one button click if there's a preset you like you just hit it and then you hit ok and it takes you back to photoshop and it applies the uh conversion i'm going to start out in the neutral because i want to show you guys how to customize your conversions over here on the right you will see your brightness and contrast sliders you turn those you'll see it affects the image. I'm going to turn down the brightness a little bit. Contrast. It's already pretty contrasty so I'm going to leave it to about minus four percent. Structure is that detail that you can bring out. You lower it all the way down you kind of soften the skin. You raise it all the way up it looks pretty brutal. So I'm going to add a little bit of structure not too much 13 percent now there's a control point setting you hit this button here to add a control point and I want to brighten up his face a little bit so I'm gonna set the control point there and I'm going to resize the circle this anything within the circle is what's going to be affected by what I do here so I'm gonna leave a little overlap and this is the brightness slider I'm gonna bump up the brightness of his face just a little bit maybe 20 19 20 around there you can also lower the contrast you can raise the contrast and this only affects your control point area so it's very cool this is the saturation or the structure I'm sorry I'm used to color effects pro so you can change the structure of just his face see that I can add some grittiness to it I'm going to make that about right there. And then you still have your global settings, which affects the whole image over here. So you can add a control point anywhere in the image. And uh, for example, I will show you just for fun his jacket. Say I want to lighten up his jacket. There you go. That's how easy it is. It's very cool. You could add some contrast to it. Let's see what happens if we add some structure to his jacket. Kind of brings out the texture in it actually. It looks pretty cool. So I think I'm going to put another one of these over here on this side of the jacket. Add some structure. There we go. Now we're going to go down to the color filters. You can add color filters. There's red, orange, yellow, green, I don't like green, blue, I don't like blue. 
Yellow looks kind of interesting, and there's the standard, but I still like the no filter better. Um, you can also change the strength of the filters here. Film types, here's where it gets interesting. Right now it's set to neutral, and it's not really set at a film stock. Silver FX Pro has all of these film stocks loaded, so you can replicate, say, the look of uh, T-Max 100, Tri-X 400, uh, Ilford XP2 400, uh, Ilford Delta 100. You have all of these options available to you. Here's Kodak ISO 32 Panatomic X, Ilford Pan F50 Plus. Let's go back to the Delta. I used to love Delta 100. I'm going to click on Delta 100. Now the grain, if the grain, if you don't want any grain in your image, you just click on this arrow here for grain. You set it all the way as high as it can go. If you want some grain, you bring it down. Whoa, look at that. Okay, here we go. I'm going to put a little bit of grain to this image. Very little bit. 40, 475. You can also adjust the grain from soft to hard. I'm going to put it somewhere in between. You can also change the uh, color sensitivities here. If I boost down the red, it makes it dark. Boost up the red, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you have total control over your conversion. Uh, tone curve, I usually don't mess with that. Stylizing, you can add toning to your image. Split toners, blue. Basically, if you want to add a color hue to your to your conversion, here's kind of like an old looking black and white. It's called coffee. So say you click on coffee, you can adjust the strength of it with this uh, silver toning or strength slider. So it's kind of cool. I'm going to actually go back to neutral on this one. Vignetting, if you want to add vignetting to your photo, which I used to be guilty of adding a lot of that to my photos, and these days I'm trying to get away from it. But I'm going to add a little teeny bit, negative 10%. You can adjust the size and go from a circle to a rectangular shape. You can even place the center. So you can place it around the center of your image so you make sure that's all even. You also have burn edges which I don't really use, but you can uh, give each edge a burned look by picking which edge you want to use it on. So we're going to give the right and the left a little bit, the top and the bottom a little bit. Let me go back to the top and a little bit. Now that I've done all of this to this image, I can save this as a preset. I can go down here and click Add Style and enter a name. I'll name it Steve's Black and White Number One. So there we go. So now any image I open, that will be in my Favorites tab right there. So now I hit OK, and it applies the conversion to the image. I see his eyes are a little dark, so what I am going to do is take the Dodge tool in Photoshop and I'm going to lighten up his eyes a little bit. I have my uh, Dodge tool set to mid-tones and 14% up at the top. And uh, I might have went a little overboard there, but that's okay. This is just a tutorial. I could always undo the Dodge tool if I went a little bit too much with it. So that's basically Silver Effects Pro in a nutshell. It's got a lot of customization. You can go in there and tweak and tweak and spend hours if you want. But uh, by following just the steps I showed you, you end up with a nice black and white conversion. Let's go back to the color and the black and white. The black and white looks really cool. I'm very happy with this conversion. And I'm going to post it on the page so you can see the before and after. So thanks for looking and uh, look for more videos in the near future. Thanks. Bye.